Here's one for you, Mr Jordan. 20 years ago this week, Charlton Athletic, fourth in the Premier League. Does it back up your stance regard Crystal Palace that, you know, be careful what you wish for? Um, not really, um, because I think Richard Murray was a village idiot that ran Charlton in the end. Um, but um, it makes one point, it doesn't make another. I mean, mm. football's moved on since then. Yeah. Opportunities, it's not wrong for the fans to expect. We've engendered a th thought process in fans that football is now not just about winning, it's about entertaining, it's Disneyfication. Yeah. So the fans, we can't necessarily ignore the fans' view that they want to see a better direction of travel. At the same time, you've got to get context and balance and be pragmatic. And, of course, that then falls into the argument that I make about be careful what you wish for, which is it's not difficult to slip and slip and fall and not be able to get back up again, which has proven to be the case for many a football club. Sure, sure. Forest, Nottingham Forest for a quarter of a century, Sheffield Wednesday for the same amount of time. You know, Charlton now languishing where they're languishing. So with all that in mind, you know, it backs up one part of the argument, but it doesn't it doesn't denigrate the feeling that fans have that they want to see the very best version of football. Yeah. Whether you agree with that or not, and whether, you know, it goes into the West Ham argument of what David Moyes is listening to, yeah. where his team are sixth in the league in the European uh, major tournament in the, in the knockout stages. Yet um, the facts are your team's successful. Well, the feelings it. are it's not good to watch. We always encourage fans to dream, dare to dream, and they're quite right to do that. And they only want the very best for their club. Ipswich fans want the best for their club, Simon. Uh, and they might just get it. Do you know that? They, they scored a late uh, equaliser at Leicester last night. I was watching it. I, I was amazed at Leicester. Leicester threw it away, really, at the end when they should have got all three points, but they didn't. And Ipswich um, have leapfrogged Southampton back into the automatic mm. promotion spots. This man, Kieran McKenna, seems to be going great guns uh, at Portman Road, and Ipswich are flying at this stage. This was McKenna post-match. Look, we, we're very much focused on, on the here and now and the next game, but there's no doubt about it to be, whatever we are, 28 games in and to be competing with, you know, three... Not just teams who've come down from the Premier League, but I think, to be honest, even the points total reflect that they're abnormally strong for a t for relegated teams and re abnormally strong as a club. So for us still to be there after 28 games competing with them and to have played you know, Leicester now twice, apart from the first half tonight, I thought they were the better side. But other than that, competed toe-to-toe -to -toe with them across the two games. Um, I think that's something we can take uh, you know, a lot of... A lot of pride in, but more importantly, it's about looking forward, and we know we have to improve. We have to we have to try and improve the squad, and, and we have to keep improving. Um, you know everything that we do to to try and finish the season strongly. He just quietly gets on with it, Simon. I mean, Kieran McKenna, who he was at Manchester United, of course, is he a Premier League manager and waiting next season, with or without Ipswich? Do you think? Um, I think that's a difficult leap because right now he's doing very, very well and he's illustrating the fact that if you're capable of doing your job and you're focused and you're disciplined and you've got good principles that you can produce something without necessarily having to have a checkbook behind you. Um, you can bring a culture into a football club, you can bring disciplines and you can affect outcomes, you can make players better. And a few managers might want to look at that, you know, rather than have the ready-made excuses about it's everybody else's fault. He's a capable operator. There was a vast step up. We've just seen it. Everyone mm. raving. What were we doing this time last year? raving about Vincent Company and yeah. Burnley yeah. and the pivot and the change and the way that they were dominating the league. Do you remember? Yes. So we're not raving about Vincent Company so much now. We're admiring his principles, which will get him relegated. Um, but notwithstanding that, he has a different currency now. And Kieran McKenna needs to grow and develop. And whether that's going to be an opportunity that he gets with Ipswich or whether someone's going to see in him um, which others saw in Steve Cooper and can transform that Nottingham Forest into a Premier League side that operated at the bottom end of the Premier League. We'll see, but it's 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 nice because I grew up watching Ipswich Town. And dare I say it, watching Brazil and Trevor Weimark and Eric Gates and George Burley went on to manage Palace and Paul Cooper in goal and Mick Mills, who was Trevor Francis' mm. assistant manager. How about Terry team, Butcher? And Terry Butcher, of course, yeah. and Russell Osman and Arnold Muin and all of those people that went on to make uh, Ipswich such a formidable side under Bobby Robson in the early 80s. Then you go forward to the 2000s with David Sheepshanks as the chairman who I knew really well and watch that side develop become a very successful side that went in, got into the European competitions and then imploded. And 20 years later, here we are, post Marcus Evans, that wasn't a successful period of ownership at Ipswich, looking at Ipswich saying, what a, what, what, what a nice story to see a football club that ultimately is doing things, it would appear, in the right way, young manager, young English manager, well healed in his experiences, albeit a relatively unsuccessful Man United side over the last 10 years, but yes. notwithstanding it, yeah. still working in a certain way. And at the top of the championship, 
And the argument about all three... It's, it's not always a given, despite statistics, that when you get relegated, you bounce straight back, back because you're coming down in a disenfranchised or disillusioned way because you've been battered to pieces in the Premier League. <laughs> yeah. So you still have to get yourself together, irrespective yeah. of how much more money you've got. Yeah. I, I look at the, the championship table this morning, Simon. Uh, Leicester at the top, Ipswich just behind them. Southampton, Leeds, West Brom, Coventry, Hull, Norwich, Watford, Sunderland, yeah. Middlesbrough. The list goes on and on. Has it now become a more competitive and engaging product in some ways than the Premier League? With, with the emphasis on no. competitive... Um, it's always been the most competitive league if you look back on the, the people's perception of it. No one wants to be in it. It's, everyone's trying to get out of it. <laughs> right? But it's a very competitive league because it's it's fraught with the ramifications of ambition. Mm. It carries the real jeopardy in football because ultimately you're, you're going for it. I remember in 2002, I think it was, 2003, when Portsmouth went up, when Milan Mandrick was a Portsmouth chairman, he went after it and they had Merson, they had Todder off in their sides. Uh, and if they hadn't have gone up, I think Portsmouth would have been in real trouble economically. But yeah, of course it is. It's a 46-game league. It's You never know what you're going to get. And every now and again, you get what you've got, which is the potential of Leicester getting 100 points plus, And yeah. they probably will. Yeah. Um, and they, again, have to be admired. because New manager, change of players. And they've got the culture right back at Leicester City. And, and so they should. But yeah, sure. yeah, to answer your question, it's it's the most it's not the most quality. The quality is in the Premier League. It doesn't have the stardust, which, yeah. is why I, which is why I always rail against the idea that the representation of it, an old man with a rattle. But it is... <laughs> It is a very, very competitive, brutal... It's all English football used to be and could be and should be sure. bottled in the league. It's funny you mentioned Milan Mandaric. I found an old picture of myself uh, the other night from uh, a, a trip to Fratton Park. I had Milan Mandaric on one side, George I'm Best. in the middle, and Roman Abramovich in the other. Oh, yeah. Portsmouth against Chelsea on that day. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.